Just before losing the election last October, the conservative government went on the biggest appointment blitz to the courts in decades. It raised eyebrows at the time, and less than a year later, one of those newly minted judges is the subject of an historic public inquiry. As Eric Sito explains, the case is now prompting troubling questions about whether judges are being properly screened and whether they're even qualified to pass judgment on Canadians. It's getting darker. We're just having a party. There is music playing and Alex is dancing. I danced with him. This is the court testimony of a woman describing what happened to her on the night of December 13th, 2011. I get really drunk. I go to the washroom. Alex sneaks in. Because of a court ban, we can't tell you her name. Only that she was 19 and living in Calgary at the time of the event. He's flirting with me. He grabs my pants and pulls it down. He takes his pants off. What happened next, she says, was sexual assault. It was not consensual. I have to call the police. Alex is charged. He denied the allegation, insisting the sex was consensual. She faced him in court almost three years later. Our system should provide justice. It should be blind. But justice was not blind that day. It's so outrageous, I, 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 I almost can't believe that it's said by a judge. Lenore Lukasik foss is talking about another part of the court transcript, spoken by Justice Robin Camp, the man sitting in judgment of the sexual assault case. Here are some of those words. Why didn't you just sink your bottom down into the basin so he couldn't penetrate you? Why couldn't you just keep your knees together? This is a judge who is not fit for this office. If she sees the door being locked, she's not a complete idiot. She knows what's coming next. Sex and pain sometimes go together. That's not necessarily a bad thing. There was a, a persistent pattern throughout my reading of the transcripts that suggested a complete ignorance of sexual violence and, and in fact, um, victim blaming. Justice Robin Camp continued on the case. He found Alex not guilty. In my opinion, uh, he is not fit to sit on the bench. Nevertheless, Robin Camp's comments in court in the case didn't get him disciplined or removed from the bench. Instead, less than a year later, Camp got a promotion, a new job as a federal court judge. Who was asleep through this process that they didn't catch this? Ultimately, the responsibility of an appointment comes down on the Justice Minister. Correct. The Justice Minister who appointed Robin Camp to the Federal Court of Canada, Peter McKay. Mr. Speaker, with respect to judicial appointments, they're based on one criteria and one criteria only, and that's merit and judicial excellence. This is the most important responsibility of a Minister of Justice. Erwin Kotler was Canada's Justice Minister from 2003 to 2006. We visited him to ask how Justice Camp could have been appointed to the federal court after his questionable behaviour in the Alberta sexual assault case. If you were still Justice Minister, would you expect to know about such a serious matter prior to an appointment? Yes. Here's why. Provincial court judges who apply to be a federal judge are vetted. First, a provincial committee reviewed Robin Camp's application. The committee is supposed to flag anything that could cast an unfavorable light on the exercise of the judicial function. If proper vetting is done, should they have caught this? Absolutely. Peter Russell is one of Canada's leading judicial affairs experts. Not only did he say things that are disrespectful of women, but he also refused to apply the law of Canada. He has no business doing that. I would say, I, I don't think this person should be considered for appointment. We don't know if the provincial committee flagged anything on Robin Camp's file. The Code of Ethics doesn't allow members to say. 
What we do know is that the committee is required to forward any applicant's name to the Justice Minister regardless of any problems. Here's the catch. The Justice Minister is not required to revet an applicant. Erwin Kotler says, nevertheless, he always did. We wanted to make sure, you know, that uh, there was nothing in any prospective appointment uh, that could ever, the phrase as it was used, bring the administration of justice into disrepute. If it would be made clear that this is going to prejudice uh, the administration of justice in this country and public confidence, then I wouldn't go ahead with the appointment. Justice Minister Peter McKay did go ahead and on June 26, 2015, appointed Robin Camp to the federal court. Either they didn't vet the candidate properly That's right. or they vetted the candidate and still appointed him anyways. That's right. Either way, it's troubling, of course. A Washington-based think tank ranked Canada's federal judicial appointment process among the weakest in the world. It found the system non-transparent and open to abuse. The appointments to those courts is so sloppy, so shoddy. It's one of Canada's, in my view, one of Canada's real shames. Legal experts say if a more rigid vetting system was put in place, some questionable decisions could have been avoided last year. Just before the federal election in 2015, the outgoing government appointed 45 people, including Robin Camp, to the bench in a span of two months, the most in decades. The vetting, it's very difficult to be that thorough in that short a period of time, particularly when you're caught up in an elections process. That was just disgusting. I, I, I just find that disgusting, an abusive process. We wanted to find out from former Justice Minister Peter McKay why and how he appointed a judge with the questionable reputation to the Federal Court of Canada. Peter McKay turned down a request for an on-camera interview and instead sent a statement saying, this matter is now under formal review and as the former Minister of Justice now working in the private sector, I will refrain from any further comment as this is an open investigation. A Canadian judge is under investigation over his behavior in a case involving the alleged sexual assault of absolute disregard for the definition of consent. That will have an effect on the way people perceive not only the judicial system, uh, but the way that Putting yourself in those shoes and reading those comments, it was um, was emotionally upsetting. In Alberta, Provincial Justice Minister Kathleen Ganley wasn't willing to stand idly by. People who are the victims of sexual assault don't come forward. And the reason they don't come forward is because they fear exactly the treatment that the complainant in this case got. So Ganley did something no other Alberta Justice Minister has ever done. She called for a public inquiry into Camp's conduct in the sexual assault case. We are signaling to the population that the system will, uh, will treat them with respect. The outcome of the inquiry could result in Robin Camp's removal from the bench permanently. In the meantime, he has been suspended from the federal court and has apologized, saying in a statement, I have come to recognize things that I said and attitudes I displayed cause deep and significant pain to many people. As for the sexual assault case that started it all, the Alberta Court of Appeal has overturned his decision and ordered a new trial. Whether these developments will be enough to restore faith in the system remains to be seen. The quality of justice will really be badly affected if you have a poor system of, of selecting judges. If you get poor judges, you get decisions that uh, that do damage to your interests and your rights. Uh, and Canada deserves better. That is our broadcast for tonight. A reminder, you can always connect with us on Facebook or on Twitter and at globalnews.ca slash 16 by 9. I'm Donna Friesen. From all of us here at 16 by 9, thanks for watching.